very good boarding students so in this particular lecture we are talking about the various systems and the physiology of these systems in tinea solium so as you are well aware that tinea solium is a parasite and it is living inside the intestine of the man so if we talk about like the very first part of tinea solium that is the nutrition so students we know that this tinea can attain a huge length of 5 meters inside the intestine of the man and this tinea it is a it is a parasite and it is taking the digested food which is present in the intestine so what you eat it will be digested in your digestive system in the intestine so you all know the process of digestion so digestion is the breakdown of the food into the smaller or you can say a very limiting kind of uh, end products which can be taken up by the cells so these may include uh, <coughs> glucose the end product of the carbohydrates it can be the amino acids so it can be some complex molecules also so this particular animal the tinea solium it is taking all the digested food particles or the end products of the food particles directly through the general body surface so if we talk about the scolex first of all so scolex it had uh, three a uh, four suckers so this is the scolex so it had four suckers you know the structure of the scolex it has got two rows of hooks so what i want to say is that it has got four suckers but these suckers they are not helping in sucking of the food so this is a very very important point so here the suckers are only meant for the attachment so they do not serve any kind of purpose in the nutrition of tinea solium now if we talk about the whole of the body or the strobila it is composed of numerous segments so these segments are called as proglottids so if you take a single proglottid this is a mature kind of proglottid so at the end we have the gravid proglottids and these are the immature proglottids now every proglottid it will take its own nutrition it will imbibe its own nutrition it will absorb its own nutrition so every segment is an individual and it will absorb the food from the intestine of the man now if we go further suppose we have got these end products in the intestine of the man or the host so we can have the amino acids we can have the glycerol the glucose or any other product so these things they are present in the intestine and same the tinea solium is also present in the intestine so what will happen that these end products will be taken directly into the body through diffusion so this is a very important aspect of nutrition so this tinea solium has got no mouth suckers are not meant for sucking the food so the nutrition is through the general body surface so students this is a mode of nutrition in tinea solium so i think that was all about the nutrition now if we go for the second aspect this is the respiration so respiration means the uptake of the oxygen and the release of the carbon dioxide so what do you think that 
if this tinea is living inside the intestine of a man will there be the oxygen present in the intestine so I think there is no oxygen in the intestine so that means where it lives the environment is anaerobic that means it will be performing anaerobic respiration so <coughs> the glycogen or the carbohydrates those will be anaerobically respired and what will be made it will be converted into like carbon dioxide fatty acids so formation of lactic acid can take place uh, which will be further uh, it will be converted to glucose then if oxygen is present so one thing is uh, uh, the common thing in this tinea solium and fasciola hepatica that both are facultative anaerobes so that means if oxygen is present it can shift to the aerobic respiration so this is the mode of respiration in tinea solium so that is the very same as it was in the fasciola hepatica so that was uh, the mode of respiration so we have the anaerobic respiration so it is a facultative anaerobe now students we have the third physiological model in tinea solium for excretion so excretion it refers to the removal of the nitrogenous waste products so as we have discussed in the earlier animals also that ejection is the removal of the waste products but excretion is the removal of nitrogenous waste products so if an animal is making urine that is excretion so that is the excretory product of the animal so excretory products can be ammonia it can be urea it can be uric acid guanine crystals or any other thing which the animal will be excreting out in case of tinea solium as it is also taking the proteins or the amino acids from the host the proteins will be broken down as we have discussed earlier also in many of the animals they will be converted into amino acids in the host and amino acids will be generally taken through diffusion inside the body of the tinea so as we have discussed in the nutrition slide so it will be taking the amino acids now the amino acids will be metabolized inside tinea inside this animal so what will be the end product it will be the ammonia so this ammonia it reacts with water to form ammonium ions so we know this so this particular excretory product it will be given out through a special kind of excretory cells which we have already discussed in fasciola hepatica so can you name the excretory cells of platyhelminthes phylum yes these are the flame cells so as fasciola hepatica had tinea solium is also having lots and lots of flame cells in all the segments so these are present scattered on the peripheries of each and every segment and will be taking up their structure and their functioning and the excretory system in just few minutes now first of all the excretory system of tinea solium is consisting of these four parts the first are the longitudinal canals so we'll be taking these canals soon second are the secondary canals third are the capillaries and fourth are the flame cells so 
these are the four major units of the excretory system of the tinea solium. Now if we go by this particular diagram, you see the diagram number C. Now if you go by this diagram, you can very well see these are the longitudinal canals. So these, these are the component number 1, these are the longitudinal canals and these canals they are running parallel to the body up till the very last segment of the tinea. And one thing is to be noted over here that this is one proglotid, this is one segment, this is another segment but the longitudinal canal is continuous it is continuously going through these segments so that means these segments they are not having their own canals so these are general canals so they are starting from the very scolex these are also present in the scolex so these are the canals two are on the left side and two are on the right side. So these are the longitudinal canals. Now one thing is to be noted that the ventral canals, ventral excretory longitudinal canals, they join together through the transverse collecting canal. So these transverse collecting canals these are present in each and every segment now we can see over here so this is the dorsal excretory canal this is the dorsal and it is going a long way throughout the body this is the ventral excretory canal and ventral joins the other ventral by this is the transverse collecting canal and this is in this segment again we have transverse collecting canal in the another segment so each segment has got transverse collecting canals now one thing is very important that in the dorsal canals the excretory fluid is going upwards towards the scolex so it will be reaching the scolex and the ventral canals they are taking the fluid towards the lower side towards the hind end towards the gravid proglottids <coughs> so each and every segment has got these two canals one is the dorsal excretory canal and second is the ventral excretory canal now if we talk about the secondary canals secondary canals are the transverse collecting canals so first we have the longitudinal canals so these may be dorsal and ventral both on the both of the sides they go parallel to each other and the ventral canals they also join each other in every segment through transverse collecting canals so that was about the longitudinal canals. Secondary canals are the transverse collecting canals which are joining the ventral canals. Now third we have the capillaries and the flame cells. So these two components are present on the periphery. Can you see these dots? So these are the scattered flame cells. So these are the scattered flame cells and each flame cell if you see the structure of the flame cell so here is one flame cell so as we have discussed in the fasciola hepatica this is the body of the flame cell this is the nucleus of the flame cell these are the basal bodies and these are the cilia which are present in the lumen of the flame cell 
and when these cilia they move they move like a flame so that's why it is called as a flame cell so whenever these cilia they move the excretory products present outside the flame cell they come towards the inside so from here these excretory products they enter the lumen so from the lumen all the excretory products they are given into the capillary so this is this is the last part of the flame cell number 7 this is the capillary part so this is the working of the flame cell and what about number 3 the capillaries that is the end pipe of the flame cell so all the waste products are present now in the capillaries of the flame cells so the things which are present at number 7 or the capillaries it is called as the primary urine as we have earlier discussed so this is the primary urine so from this capillary as the capillary is a single celled thick walled it is very thin so if some things are required from this primary urine they will be reabsorbed so if they are reabsorbed what is left in the capillary it is only and only the waste products so that forms the secondary urine and now this capillary it will be opening into the ventral and dorsal ducts so these are the flame cells so this is one flame cell and where these flame cells are present these are present on the periphery so these dots small dots are the flame cells so these have the capillaries and these capillaries they are going into these canals so ultimately the urine it reaches the canals and these ventral canals they will take the urine towards the hind end and at the very last segment on the very last segment and that last segment will be a gravid proglottid that will be a gravid segment old segment now this last segment has got a caudal bladder so it is called as a bladder so all these four canals which are reaching the last segment two dorsal and two ventral they are opening into the caudal bladder so at that bladder it opens out of the body at the very last segment so this is the whole of the excretory system in tinea solium now students after excretion now we are to the next system which is very very important that is the nervous system of tinea solium so in many of the books you will find this particular system a uh, quite uh, difficult one uh, to like to grab upon but here i will try to give you the simplest method to understand this particular system so students as we all know that nervous system is composed of uh, a central nervous system the autonomic nerves or the peripheral nerves so here we are discussing first of all the central nervous system the nervous system it coordinates the whole body of the tinea solium it helps to coordinate the whole body now tinea solium has got two cerebral ganglia so here i have written two cg so that means it has got two cerebral ganglia in the scolex part so these are present in the scolex part now these two cerebral ganglia they are joined by two things so i'll be taking up one by one so if you see these two circles so these these are representing two cerebral ganglia 
so here they are present they are present in the scolex of tinea solium understand now we will be going step by step now these two dots or t two circles blue circles these are the cerebral ganglia and they are also referred to as the brain of tinea now these are joined by two things now what is the first thing number one this is a ring so uh, we will be taking up that how this ring is joining these two cerebral ganglia now this ring is composed of two components number a this is the dorsal commissure so students you should be very clear about the word commissure commissure is any kind of connection which is joining two same kind of ganglia now here we are joining two cerebral ganglia that means both are cerebral of the kind so that means both are same type of ganglia so the connection in between these two will be the commissure and if you have two different ganglia somewhere else if uh, suppose one is the cerebral one is esophageal ganglia ganglion i should say so if there is a connection between a cerebral and an esophageal ganglion that will be not commissure that will be a connective so this is the difference between commissure and connective so commissure is joining two same ganglia whereas the connective joins two different ganglia so as we are talking here about the cerebral ganglia so here we write it as commissure because these are same so the ring is composed of two components first component is the dorsal commissure which is present like this and second part is the ventral commissure so we have got two commissures which are joining to form a ring and this ring is joining two cerebral ganglia now just see how these commissures they are present so this is the first commissure which is in a red color it is representing the dorsal commissure so i have used the red color for dorsal commissure and the connect uh, and the commissure in the diagram so this is the dorsal commissure which is joining the cerebral ganglia and this is the ventral commissure and these two commissures they are forming the ring so as you can see in the diagram this is very clearly you can see that they are forming a ring and they are joining two cerebral ganglia so i think you are clear up till now now we have already said that these are joined by two things there are two things so first thing is the ring now what is the second thing we should go by the second thing now so this is the transverse commissure transverse so this commissure it is somewhat thick in uh, nature so where it is present and how it is joining the two cerebral ganglia so we will be seeing now so this is the transverse commissure in between the two cerebral ganglia so students i think you are very much clear about uh, this particular structure so these are the two things which are joining the two cerebral ganglia first is the ring composed of dorsal and ventral commissure and second is the transverse commissure which is in green color now students whole of this structure which includes two cerebral ganglia one dorsal commissure one ventral commissure and one transverse commissure this is called as the brain complex so this is a most important thing you may get a question on what is brain complex in tinea solium so all these structures they are all together they are called as the brain complex now i think you are clear about this till now 
so now we are taking this brain complex and we are going further now I am starting with the brain complex now so what is the rest of the body uh, nervous system of the tinea solium so what we have is a brain complex so you can see in the figure in the diagram on the right side now from this brain complex eight nerves they arise anteriorly so this is a very important feature so eight nerves they are arising anteriorly and six nerves they arise posteriorly that means eight nerves are going upwards and six nerves they are going down towards the body as the brain complex which you can see on the right side it is present in the scolex part scolex is the very first part of tinea you can well see if you recall the structure of the tinea that is the very first part of the tinea body so this brain complex it is pre present in the scolex eight nerves they arise anteriorly so these are going towards the hooks eight nerves are going towards the hooks of the tinea and six nerves they are going posteriorly towards the body of the tinea or the strobila now if we take the eight nerves which are going anteriorly out of these eight nerves four they come out from the ring ring means that the dorsal commissure the red one and the ventral commissure the yellow one so four nerves they are arising from the ring now just see how and the four out of the eight four are from the transverse commissure the green one so students these are the four nerves which are blue ones from the ring now you can very well see that these four nerves they are from the they are arising from the ring two are from the dorsal commissure from the red commissure and two are from the ventral commissure the yellow one now these are the four nerves from the ring now what about the four nerves from the transverse commissure so these are the four nerves from the transverse commissure so total nerves are eight in number so as we have discussed earlier these are eight nerves which are arising anteriorly now students this is a very very important thing all these eight nerves the four from the ring and four from the transverse commissure they join to form a ring another ring which is called as the rostellar ring and if you recall the structure of the scolex i had told you that the hooks are present anchored on to a plate which is called as the rostellum so rostellum was a plate on which the hooks were embedded so this ring the rostellar ring is present in the rostellum and there can be some function of this ring to control the hooks the movement of the hooks so these nerves they serve to control the movement of the hooks in the tinea solium so these were the nerves the eight nerves which were arising anteriorly now we are concerned with the six nerves that are going posteriorly now just see about these eight nerves or sorry six nerves which are going posteriorly now out of these six nerves two are lateral and they are arising from the cerebral ganglia cg refers to the cerebral ganglia so as you can very well see in the diagram on the right side the blue circles are the cerebral ganglia and these two laterals are arising from those blue circles 
Next are the dorsal nerves and these will be arising from the dorsal commissure. So we have discussed that dorsal commissure is the red commissure. So these dorsal will be arising from the red commissure and two are from the ventral uh, commissure, the yellow one. So that means the total number of the nerves are six. The total number is the six. Two lateral, two dorsal, two ventral and they are arising from the three main origins. Now first of all we have the lateral nerves. Now just see we have written lateral two in number from CG. So they are arising from the cerebral ganglia as you can very well see in the diagram. Now next are the two dorsal nerves and they will be arising from dorsal commissure, the red line. So these are the two dorsal nerves from dorsal commissure. So you can very well see they are arising posteriorly from the red line or the dorsal commissure. Now two are the ventral and they will arise from the ventral commissure. So these are the black ones. These are arising from the yellow line or the ventral commissure. So students in total you have got six nerves which are arising posteriorly and they are going up till the last segment. They are going downwards and they go and they ramify whole of the body of the tinea. So I think you are very much clear about the nervous system of the tinea solium and you are very much clear about the nerves which are arising from the brain complex. First of all, you should be clear about the brain complex structure, how it is formed, what are the components of brain complex. Then you should know that eight nerves they arise anteriorly and how they arise, you should know. What is the rostellar ring, how it is formed, you should know it. You should know the number of the nerves which are arising posteriorly and from where it is arising, a particular nerve. Now if you go with the diagram, so this is a kind of diagram that you can get in your book. So here it is written as this is the brain complex that we have discussed and we have got the two cerebral ganglia. This is the first one, this is the second one, these are the cerebral ganglia and they are joined by a dorsal commissure and a ventral commissure. This is the ring that was joining the two cerebral ganglia and in the center we have a transverse commissure which is a thick one. Now anteriorly you have got eight nerves, four are from the transverse commissure. This is the first, this is the second, this is the third one and this is the fourth one. And we have got four nerves from the ring. This is the first one, this is the second one, this is the third one and this is the fourth one. So four from the ring and four from the transverse commissure. So we got eight nerves anteriorly and this is the rostellar ring. And this ring has a ganglion which is called as the rostellar ganglion. So this ring is present in the rostellar part or the rostellum. So these are the nerves which are going to the rostellum <coughs> and the suckers. So these are the nerves which are controlling the hooks and the suckers. So that was the whole nervous system <coughs> on the top. Now if we go towards the lower side, we have these six nerves rising posteriorly. So here also we have got the nerves and these are the connectives. So here in each proglottid we have some connectives present in between the 
lateral nerves so this this is the lateral nerve this is again a lateral nerve and lateral nerves they are joined together to form a common ring connective so this connective is present in each proglottid so this is a kind of transverse you can say commissures also in between the nerve cords so that was the nervous system of the tinea solium so students uh, this lecture was on different systems and the physiology of tinea solium so in this particular lecture we are discussed about the nutrition about the respiration about the excretion and about the coordination or nervous system of tinea solium so i hope that you have understood these topics and at the very last in the coming lecture we will be talking about the reproductive systems thank you very much